us. <laughs> All right, so so this is the uh, the half semester point. All right, so in the in the first uh, half of the semester, we started ordinary differential equations, which became the basis of uh, almost anything we are learning later this semester. And then we went to partial differential equations, where we had not just the time, but also space and time, sometimes only space, right? And we studied finite difference and finite volume. And the big difference is that finite difference has to rely, it can solve any partial differential equations as long as the partial derivatives actually exist. Well, finite volume, it cannot solve any partial differential equation. It can only solve the kind of differential equations that can be written in conservative forms. But it can deal with solutions that became discontinuous, like shock waves. And uh, although we didn't explain in much detail, finite volume is also much better at discretizing complex domains using unstructured mesh. So as long as you can divide the domain into small volumes, finite volume is going to deal with that with not much change in the code. While for finite difference, you have to come up with a, a different way to discretize each differential operator at each grid point if your mesh is unstructured. So today we are going to look at the third way of discretizing partial differential equations. It's called uh, finite elements. Finite elements is not so easy. It's, it's like the difference between finite difference and finite volume is pretty easy to spell out. Well, for finite elements, it's not so much uh, easy to explain like what equations it is good for, what equations it is not good for, what scenario it is good for, what it is not good for. But like uh, I'm first going to start out by explaining what finite difference actually does. So just to remind you uh, about a comparison we did actually before, I'm going to um, again start with the finite difference demo. So the finite difference demo basically tells you how finite difference discretizes a function I'm now drawing. So I'm now drawing a, oops, let me, uh, let me do this again. So I'm starting to draw a function that is going to be discretized by finite difference. Okay, so finite difference actually recalls the values of the function at the grid points, right? We already know that. And uh, uh, then I'm going to proceed to finite volume, which we should already know. FV demo is going to also discretize a function I'm going to draw over here, which I think I messed up again. I need to draw basically from left to right. I think if I uh, if I draw from left to right and then I switch direction, it doesn't work very well. Okay, so I'm drawing another function discretized by finite volume. What it does is in order to be able to resolve conservation laws that can develop discontinuous solutions, finite volume never recalls the solution at grid points. Rather, it recalls the average of the solution, or the average of the conserved quantities in each finite volume, right, in between these grid points in 1D, okay? And then, what we haven't really studied is finite elements. And it turns out, what finite elements does is actually, again, not as straightforward as what finite difference and finite volume does. So I'm going to give you two different flavors of finite elements. And uh, you can look at them and uh, tell me what each of these flavors do, what's different between them, and uh, what might be in common between them. I'm going to give you two things. One is FE demo. So here, I like to somebody to come up and uh, draw a function. This version, this flavor of finite elements is going to uh, discretize. Okay, please. 
the one thing I'm good for in this class is function drawer. Function drawing, okay. It's more important. We are doing the constructive work. Oh. Nice. Okay. Looks like some kind of function you might see in a oscilloscope or something. So this is a, a this is you see the faint curve that the trolley has drawn, and then this uh, solid red curve that is uh, an approximation of the function with finite elements on the computer. Okay, so can taking that approximation and tell me a little bit about what the approximation is doing. Well, maybe you can tell me first what the approximation is not doing first. Huh? I would have thought it would be like least squares, but it's not doing that. It's not doing least squares? How can you tell? Uh, because the, um, the grid between, or the two, the cell uh, 0 to 0 0.2 to 0 0.3. Here? Uh, if you're doing least squares, it would fall somewhere between the, uh, like, it would probably fall somewhere between the two endpoints. Okay. Uh, I, think, I think your intuition comes from, uh, uh, the kind of least squares you do, for example, in statistics, a linear regression, right? Yeah. So if yeah, you do sorry. linear regression, you would expect the line to kind of cut through all these wiggles. Yeah, that's right. Okay. Sorry. Okay, linear good. Regression via least squares between each endpoint. Okay. Uh, it's not doing that. So it's not doing linear regression between each grid point. All right. Yes? I feel like in that region, it's accounting for the higher peak in the next cell. So. Uh, where? In which region? Yeah, between 0 0.2 and 0 0.3. Right, okay, so so uh, you've discovered that uh, it seems like uh, it's trying to account for this higher peak in the next cell by going higher than what you would have in the least squares in that cell only. Right? So doing like a least squares uh, like optimization between like the, uh, if you took segments. Like if you took line segment, an arbitrary set of line segments between each cell, and then like optimize those against the like minimal like minimal error against the actual function. Okay, so that's a good guess. Like Although global, like a more global least squares. A more global least squares. It's not, it's not a greedy algorithm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so so we have a lot of guess. Like a more global least squares is actually the right guess here right so it's not doing the linear regression independently in each element right so now here we call this an element another element right i mean in one day it's the same also in multiple days it's actually the same as a volume in finite volume but like in finite element we just call it an element right it's practically the same as a volume in finite volume okay so good uh what this is doing, the answer is that it is actually doing a global least squares under the constraint, right? There is a constraint, and that's why looking at just a, this element, it doesn't look like it's a least squares. It's because we have the constraint that the lines have to be continuous across these elements. All right, 